Hi guys, today we'll discuss C Limited's earnings as well as investor guidance. Before we start, please don't forget the financial disclosure. This is neither a buy nor a sell recommendation on the stock and I'm not a financial advisor, so please remember to do your own research. I've already done a video discussing C's business so you can check it out here. In the past month, C's stock price has been extremely volatile, rising up to $170 per share at its peak and touching $120 per share at its lowest. This was driven by inflation fears, geopolitical risks, and stock-specific reasons such as India's ban of free fires, as well as its latest earnings. Let's take a look at some of the broad messages shown in yesterday's earnings results. Shares were down 13% yesterday for C as the company beat on revenues but missed the adjusted loss per share. According to Motley Fu, the company reported an adjusted loss per share of $0.88, cents, which is higher than the analyst consensus of $0.59. Cents. One reason why the stock also sold off was due to management guidance for FY22. They are guiding for digital entertainment bookings of $2.9 billion to $3.1 billion, of which the midpoint represents a 35% year-on-year decrease compared to FY21 bookings of $4.6 billion. However, e-commerce revenues were, grow were expected to grow at 75.7% at midpoint, and compared to Bofa's survey of buy-side clients, the guidance for Garena severely missed forecasts of 1-5% to growth, while e-commerce guidance outperformed expectations for 40-50% to growth. Let's take a deeper look at the performance of the e-commerce segment. Reading its full year 2021 results, one can see strong execution on the e-commerce front. The company said that for more mature markets such as Taiwan and Southeast Asia, adjusted EBITDA loss per order had substantially decreased from $0.21 cents in fourth quarter of 2020 to $0.15, cents, and Shopee is on track to achieving positive adjusted EBITDA by this year in these markets. However, for newer markets like Brazil, while the company is achieving high growth in these markets, they are incurring much larger losses per order, therefore impacting the overall adjusted EBITDA loss per order. When addressing investors, CEO Forrest Lee also said that Shopee would continue investing heavily in Latin America with a focus on Brazil. He believes that while this will impact bottom line in the near term, unit economics and profitability will improve with scale. Similar to its previous strategies, they plan to first manage strong user and order growth before focusing on profitability. Given the proven profitability of other players like Melly in Latin America, he believes that this will be accurate to shareholders in the long run. The management's decision to invest in Latin America seems to be heading in the right direction for now. According to the Business Times, Goldman Sachs estimated that Shopee's market share has already reached high single digits by 2021, and this could rise to 20% by 2025. The company has also mentioned that Shopee's local operations in Latin America has been gaining traction, and the company was mentioned as a top 3 e-commerce purchase destination by 37% of consumers last year up from just only 6% in 2020. Therefore, it is likely that Shopee's momentum in Latin America will continue to accelerate as it builds market share. Of course, this will come with higher investments in logistics and marketing that will keep the overall cash burn high in the next two years for the entire e-commerce segment. And it is likely that the entire break-even timing for the entire e-commerce segment will rest heavily upon Latin America's progress, and this will be a key watch point for investors going forward. Let's take a deeper look at the performance of the digital entertainment segment. For Garena, management expects bookings for digital entertainment to be dampened by economy reopenings and therefore the moderation in online activities. Furthermore, the guidance also takes into account the fact that Free Fire is currently unavailable in the Google Play and iOS app stores in India. I think that these forecasts were lower than what analysts were expecting and this may tri trigger downward revisions in target prices as most sell side reports do not take into ex expectations of such a large drop. Most sell side reports had came out reporting that India's contribution to Garena's revenue is low as the average revenue per paying user is lower than average. However, this set of guidance likely reflects a larger moderation in online activities than just headwinds in India. The company also said that they will be bringing more self-developed games to market in due course. However, given the bearish management guidance, this is probably not anywhere in the near term, possibly only in 2023. Therefore, until we see a new self-developed game, C's share price might lack catalyst to drive it upwards. Lastly, let's take a look at the digital financial services segment. 
For C money, management pointed to solid growth in revenues and active users, and better unit economics as adjusted EBITDA posted 150 million loss, down from 171 million loss in fourth quarter of 2020. Management also said that the segment is likely to achieve positive cash flow by next year, which is a definite positive for investors. Now, let's look at the overall thoughts for C Limited as a whole. I think the company has been very strategic to do large amounts of fundraising before its share price took a hit. Its cash balance currently stands at $10.2 billion, and on the earnings call, management said, quote-unquote, we have around $10 billion of cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investments on our balance sheet, including close to $7 billion raised last year, which we intend to invest in the growth of Shopee and C-Money over the coming years. Based on our current plan, we believe we have the financial resources required to grow the two businesses to inflection point without having to rely heavily on cash generated from the digital entertainment business. I think as a whole, C is still a very solid business and its current share price is quite attractive to me. I do think that there could be a possibility of more downside in the future, but I would like to average dollar cost into the share from now on. And that's the end of today's video. If, if you enjoyed this, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more stock and possibly crypto videos in this space going forward.